In this video, I will show you how to add the Google authentication to your Flutter application so the users can easily register or sign into your application without entering the email and password credentials each time. So let's jump in. Hey friends, before starting the video, if you're new to this series, you can watch the full series from the top right corner of the screen. And if you wonder how to add this beautiful registration screen. You can also find the video related to that in the playlist above, as well as adding Firebase to our application and also adding the email and password authentication that we did in the last video. So for today's video, adding the Google authentication to our application, let's go to a browser and again type Flutter Firebase Auth and then go to this specific link. I'll again leave the link in the description section. And we came here in the last video. And in this video, what we're going to do is click on the Federated Identity and Social link. And in here, we can add different social authentications to our application. For example, Google, Google Play Games, Facebook, Apple, Twitter, GitHub. And for this video, we'll just focus on the Google. And in the next video, we will work on the Facebook authentication. So as they say that you have to configure the SHA-1 key and we'll do that in a minute. But first of all, we have to go to the Firebase console to enable the Google sign in provider. So for that, I'll just say Firebase console and then go to the project, which in this case is awesome notes 29 A3E. And then again, go to authentication from this link or from the lift and then we'll go to the sign in method and add new provider and then click on the Google. And in here, they state that to enable Google sign in for your Android apps, you must provide the SHA-1 release fingerprint. And if we click on this link, it'll bring us to a link and they will show us how to generate this SHA-1 certificate for your application. And there are two methods, but I'll go with this method. Okay, so first of all, I'll go to our project and then go to the Android directory, then find the Gradle W file and then right click on that and then open an integrated terminal. Then here we have to write dot slash Gradle W signing report okay you have to write exactly same thing or if this is not working for you you can omit the dot slash part and i'll hit enter and this will try to generate those sha keys or to say sha keys i don't know how it's pronounced but whatever okay so it just gave us an error and that's related to some versioning incompatibilities. So the main reason for this is that current Java version is not compatible with the Gradle version that we're using in our project. So first of all, if you face the same error in your machine, what you are going to do is just write Java dash version and check your Java version. And in my case, it is Java 21. And then also go to the Android directory again, and then to the Gradle, and then to Gradle wrapper.properties. In here, look for the Gradle version that you're using. And in my case, I use the 7.5 Gradle. So to check the compatible version of Java in Gradle, I will go to the browser. So I'll open a new tab and write Gradle Java compatibility. And I'll go to the first link, compatibility matrix, and I'll leave this link in the description. And here you have to find your Java version that you're using on your machine and then the supporting Gradle version. And in my case, I use the Java 21 and I have to use the 8.5 Gradle version. So I'll go back to my project and then turn this to 8.5 and then run the command again. So now the process has created as these different keys that we can use. And the one that we need is the SHA-1. So what we're going to do is just copy this SHA-1 key and then go back to the browser and go to the project settings link. 
in where we are going to set our SHA-1 key for the project. So here we have to come down and make sure you are in the Android app and then add the fingerprint. You can add the SHA-1 or SHA-256 key and in our case we're adding the SHA-1 key. So it is detected as SHA-1 key. Now let's just click on the save button and we're done in here. And then we have to click on the Google Enable button. We'll leave this as it is, but for the support email for project, we'll just choose an email and then click Save. And now, as they say, we have to download the latest configurations to our project, but we're not going to do them manually. We're going to do them with Flutter Fire Configure command, and we'll just ignore this one. And now the Google provider is enabled and then we can go back to this documentation in here and just read this part. It states that if a user signs in with Google but they already had the email registered in the application, it will be replaced with Google. And now install the Google Sign In plugin to our Flutter application from the pub.dev. So I'll just go to the installing tab and then copy this specific code go back to our project, go to the terminal, paste it in here and hit enter to get the dependencies. And now before moving on, we have to configure this application using the flutter fire configure command. So, okay, we're in the Android, we have to go back to the root of the project and then run the flutter fire configure command. So this will update our Firebase options file and other necessary files related to Firebase so that we can use the Google authentication in our application. Now let's choose our project, which in our case is the first one. And then let's just uncheck the web because we're not supporting the web for this project, at least not now. So we have to press the space to uncheck the web and then hit enter. And now it says that this Firebase option that Dart file already exists. And yeah, we want to override that. So we will just enter the yes. And that's it. The project is updated with new configurations. And now we can go to the documentation and move forward. So to sign in with Google, it's really straightforward. We just have to copy the specific code and then use it on our application. So as you know, for the registration process, we're using a specific class which is auth service in the previous video we registered the user using email and password and also for sign in we used this method and now we'll just paste the code for google sign in so we have to remove this import from here and just import the google sign in package automatically using the shortcut in our case it is going to be control dot Okay, it's not importing automatically, so I think we have to do flutter clean. Okay, so I'll just say flutter clean. And then flutter pub git to get the packages again. And now we'll try if this works. Okay, it is not working. So I think I have to restart the ID. So now that the VS code is restarted, I'll again try and yes, it is working. So we have to import the Google sign in package. And yeah, that's all it takes. We have to call this method in our code to be able to sign in. So we'll use this specific method in our registration controller class. Okay. Again, if you're new to the video, you can check the previous videos how this class is made and is working. So I'll go to the bottom of the file and here we added the registration for email and password. But in here we will add a method for Google. So I'll say future void authenticate with Google. I'll just get help from my AI assistant and then I'll just say try and then await auth service that sign in with Google. And now this is giving me error because this is not defined as a static method. So we have to go there and define the sign in with Google as a static method. So we can use it without the auth service object directly from the class. And now we're using the try catch because maybe some error will happen along the way. So we'll just show a message dialog if there is some error happening. And 
the message is going to be something like this one. So I'll just copy it and paste it in here. Okay, we are adding two quotations. And we have to add an additional check if not context.mounted, just return so that the dialog is shown without an error happening. And yeah, now we can use this specific method in this button. So we'll go to the registration page and find the button. So I'll just come in here. So, so here it is. This is the Google button. So I'll just say registration controller dot authenticate with Google. So this registration controller is also defined in here. So you can also check the previous videos to see how this works. So now I'll just run the application from the beginning because we added several dependencies. Okay, so we're back. So let's just test this, how this works. So I'll just click on the Google button. And now it'll open the available accounts in my device to choose from. So if you have one account, then it'll just directly sign you in to the application. So this dialog will not be shown to you. And if you don't have a Google account in your device at all, then a page for adding a new Google account will be shown to you. So now before clicking on any of the accounts, I want to go to the Firebase console and go to the authentication part and then see the users. So this is the account that I registered with in the last video and see how this account changed to a Google provider in here. Because as I mentioned in the start of the video, an email and password account will be replaced with the Google account if the email addresses are the same. So I'll just go back to the application and click on the first email address. Now this will directly sign into the application. Again, if you're wondering how this worked, so go to the main.art file and in here, we're listening to the user stream. And then if there is a user available and if the email is verified, then we're headed to the main page. And in this case, both we have the user with Google sign in and also the email is automatically verified. So we don't need to send a verification email. Again, you can check this in the previous video. So I'll link it to the top right corner of the screen. And now to sign out, We'll again use this button and that is in the main page. So we are going to click on this button and it'll show as a dialog as in here. And then if we click on the yes, then the log out method from the auth service will be called and then we will be again in the registration page. And now if we want to sign in again using the Google, if I click on this, then no dialog will be shown in here and you'll be redirected to the main page directly. And that's because in the logout method, we're just signing out from the Firebase authentication object in here, okay? So we're just using the sign out on the Firebase.instance, but in the case of Google authentication, we have to use another method. So first of all, I have to convert this to a block body and I'll just remove the return and just await for this and also turn this to an async function. And after we're signed out in the Firebase, we have to also call the Google sign in dot sign out. Now we have to again await for this. And if we hot reload this, and this time log out with the updated log out code, now the Google sign in will also be signed out. And if we click on the Google button again, now the dialog is shown again and we can choose different account, okay? And in my case, I'll just use the previous account and just sign in and then we'll be redirected to the main page. Amazing, now let's just check one edge case. I'll just log out first. And now if I click again on the Google button, it'll show me the dialog to choose an account from. And now if I just click outside of it, so if the user don't want to choose an account, then it'll just show that an unknown error occurred. And that is because if we do not choose an account, okay, so here we are, then the Google user is going to be null. So it will just throw an error in here. So, and whenever the error is thrown, the place that we use the sign in with Google, which is in here in the registration controller, 
we're just catching that error and showing a dialog. Now, this is not a good user experience, okay? If a user does not choose an account, we should not show an unknown error occurred dialog. We should just ignore that. So to do that, I'll just define an exception, okay, a custom exception. So I'll just say class no Google account chosen exception okay it'll implement the exception class so that's it so we'll go back to the auth service and in here after the google user we'll just check if google user is going to be null then we'll just throw that custom error that we defined and that was no google account exception and we'll just add a const modifier and now I want to go back to the registration controller and whenever we're catching the error first of all we'll just catch that custom error so I'll say on no Google account chosen exception in that case we'll just return and do nothing and now if I just hot reload this and try again with Google and then click outside of the dialog the no error dialog will be shown in this specific case. If there is error related to other issues, not just the no Google account exception part, then it'll be shown and that is good. We want to show them, but if the user does not choose an account, then we're just doing nothing. Okay, great. I think that's it for the Google authentication functionality added to our application. In the next video, we're going to work on the Facebook authentication option. So stay tuned for that. So if you're enjoying the content and receive some benefit from my content, please consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with your friends who can also learn something from it. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.